35 years ago, I got obsessed with a simple question. What makes the difference in the quality of people's lives? What makes some people leaders and other people followers? What makes most people talk about a dream and never follow through, and other people just a small percentage kick ass, take names, you can throw any obstacle at them, they find a way to break through. What's the difference? And when I first grew up, I grew up very poor financially. I grew up in a very tough environment. When I met my fourth father, I said, Mom, I'm confused. I was confused because I always loved people, loved people, just my nature. But when I was in high school, I was not the most popular kid in school. In fact, the most popular kid in school treated me like hell. He was so vicious and mean. I thought, what, what makes that guy popular? So it made me obsessed to want to know why people's lives turn out so differently. And my first answer, growing up poor with no great role models, was, well, some people are just lucky. They grew up in a family where everybody loves each other and they stay together. You know, some people are lucky. They grew up in a family and everybody's educated, and so they work hard to educate their kids. Or some people are lucky. They grew up in a family with lots of money, so they have resources to travel and learn and expand and do whatever they want. And as much as I wanted to believe that story, that some people are just lucky, that they had a better family, when you pay attention and you're even slightly honest with yourself, that story doesn't hold up, does it? Because when you look around, what happens to people that were truly given everything and they don't have to work for it? What happens to the person who's born and they got total love and support from their family, they have total financial abundance, they don't have to worry about it whatsoever, they got all the great education, what happens to the majority of those? Not all, but the majority of those people don't build any muscle. They're not hungry because everything was given to them, so they don't have any hunger that could give them drive. Which if you ask me, Tony, what's the single most important key to success above anything else? It's not talent, it's not skill, it's hunger. If you get enough hunger going in you for an answer, you'll find the answer. If you get a hunger enough inside of you that says, I gotta take things to a next level, I gotta achieve, I gotta make a difference, I gotta expand, you will find the answer. People's intelligence will expand if they got enough hunger. But if you got everything and you're not hungry, you're not gonna have much. Look at the pathetic people you read about in the rag newspapers who were given everything. And as a result, what do you find out? The majority of people that are given everything, you find them living in rehab. They've been getting everything else and they're going in and out of rehab for drugs or alcohol or something else. And then you find these people that life seems to have stepped on. You know the kind of people I'm talking about? Life has kicked them in the face. They've experienced tremendous injustice. Nothing has been fair to them. They've been abused mentally, emotionally, sexually, spiritually, whatever. And very often, those are the very people that most of us are inspired by who achieve levels that most people never dream about and who touch society. For example, what would you guess would be the future for a child if I described their background? Because most people think biography is destiny. What you've been through determines who you are. And most of us, if we're not succeeding, can tell everybody the stories of why we're in that place. But it's much more fun to tell people where you are today in spite of what happened in your life. That's a much more interesting story, isn't it? But if you look around, what if a person's story is this? True story, a person's born and their father's not there as a baby. Their father left before they got there. Their mother is gonna raise them and their mother's 13. A child being raised by a child. If that's all I told you, what would you predict to the future this child would be good? Real positive, uplifting, expansive, powerful, influential, or concerning? Concerning. What if I said this 13-year-old mother didn't know what to do with this baby and was overwhelmed, so she gave the baby most of the time to her grandma, who had lots to deal with. And what if I told you, with grandma not noticing, before this child was 13, she was sexually abused more than three times by different people in family and friends. Now, a little baby being abused, a child being abused. What's the future? Doesn't look too bright, does it? What if I told you at 13, when the baby turned 13, this baby became exactly like her mother and became pregnant as well. Followed exactly in her mother's footsteps. What if I told you at 13 when the baby arrived, the baby was stillborn. The baby died at birth. What would that do to an adult mom having a baby, much less a 13-year-old child? What if I told you the kid went a little crazy with her behavior, got so outrageous and out of control, they put her in an institution, but fortunately the institution didn't have enough beds, so they couldn't keep her there more than a few days, and they finally released her to a man who claimed to be her father, who she'd not met. By now I'm sure you figured out whose story this is. Who is it? This is Oprah Winfrey's story. 
Oprah Winfrey went through all that we just said, plus she was African-American at a time in the U.S. when the President of the United States was not African-American and when many people in the U.S. did not judge people by their character, they judged them by their color based on nothing whatsoever. This woman has become one of the most influential people in the world, females on the planet, and that's her story. So the reason is, whatever story you're being told about the economy, whatever story you're being told around you, you have to be so aware not to buy into a limiting story. Either someone else telling you that or you telling yourself that. And I'll tell you something, it's gotten worse as the years gone by, and I think the U.S. has been the leader in it, and I'm not attacking my country, it's just, it's interesting what's happened in my country in the last two decades. Some of you may be old enough to remember 20 years ago when things started to change, because America likes to export their stories. So I think many of you, if you're around then, can remember there was a story of two young men who killed their parents in Los Angeles. Their names were the Menendez brothers. Does anybody here remember that story, the Menendez brothers? Keep your hands up so I can see a sense. Yeah, quite a few of you can remember the story. If you didn't know the story, it's about these two young men. They killed their parents, their mother and father, at point blank range with a shotgun, murdered them in cold blood. But when they went to a jury trial, the jury couldn't decide. They admitted they did it. They admitted it. But they said but our parents were abusive. And so the jury literally was deadlocked. It took two jury trials to convict them. Now, all because they were abused. Well, many people are abused. They don't kill their parents with shotguns, right? See, if you and I are going to be successful, we're never going to get it by blaming somebody else, including God. People say, I'm, I'm poor because God wanted me to be poor. I'm fat because God got me fat. No, you're poor and fat because you sit on the couch and watch TV and eat Cheetos all day. It's not God's fault. So what I'm suggesting to you is you and I have to come up with a better story, a story that can make things work. So now I want you to tell me the truth on something here. Tell me right now, who here in this room has ever failed to accomplish something that really mattered to you? We all know we failed at some point. The first time I ever asked this question on stage, it was spontaneous. I was at this group called TED, Technology, Entertainment, and Design. And I asked everybody in the audience, because they're all multi-billionaires, the guys that started Yahoo, the guys that started Google. It's this really unique group of people. And they're in this darkness. And they weren't responding. So I said, let me just ask you a question. How many of you have ever failed? No one raised their hand. I said, thank you for your full participation. How many have ever failed? They all raised their hand. I said, great. When you failed in the past, why did you fail? And this is where you hear people's story. Remember why I'm telling you this? Because I want to tell you right now, you might write down something. Change your story, change your life. We all have a story about why we are where we are. If you're not where you want to be in your life, in some area, like maybe your body's great, but your finances aren't, or your finance is great, but your relationship sucks, or doesn't, or whatever, the bottom line is, you've got a story why it's that way. And the story we tell ourselves protects us from pain. It gives us a reason why it's not our fault or it's gonna be okay in the future. But the story that protects you also imprisons you. It keeps you from changing your life. So in order to create a change in your life, you really truly gotta change your story. You gotta shift your story. You gotta find a story that's gonna empower you, a story that's gonna strengthen you, a story that will push you beyond anything you've ever done in the past. So the story most people have and that they had at this TED piece was I said, why have you failed in the past? Didn't have the money, didn't have enough time, didn't have the right resources, didn't know the right people, didn't have the right contacts, didn't have the technology. Some people said we had a, we had a lousy leader. The leader said I had lousy people. Right? Isn't the stuff that people tell you? And then in the darkness, I heard this voice say, I didn't have enough Supreme Court justices. And I looked into the dark room down there in the front row and it's Vice President Al Gore who lost to George Bush and the whole crowd. I was in Northern California and it was a Democratic crowd so they all stood up and cheered like crazy. And when they're done cheering, I just stood there and I said, that's one way to explain why you didn't come President of the United States. You didn't have enough Supreme Court justices. But I might suggest there might be a different reason and everybody was like quiet going, what's he gonna say? And I said, let's look at everybody else first. Those of you who told me you don't have the money, you don't have the time, you don't have the education, you didn't have the right people, didn't have the right skills, didn't have the right technology, didn't have the right Supreme Court justices or enough of them. I would submit to you, you've all told me the reason you failed is you didn't have the resources. Time is a resource. Money is a resource. Technology is a resource. Knowing the right people is a resource. And I said to the audience, here's my experience working with the most successful people on the face of the planet, athletes, presidents of the United States, multi-billionaires, here's what I know from them. Resources are never the real problem. A lack of resourcefulness 
is the real problem. I'll say it again. Lacking the resources is not the problem. Lacking resourcefulness is the real problem. What I mean by that is very simple. The ultimate resource is human emotion. What starts wars? Is it logic? Hell no, it's emotion. What makes you get married or get divorced? It's emotion. What will make you stay up all night work to build your business? Emotion. What will make you give up? Emotion. If you don't master your emotion, if you don't become resourceful, then you're gonna think the problem is resources. Because I'm here to tell you, every great person I know didn't have the resources, but they got them, because they're resourceful. And what that means is, if you're creative enough, creativity is an emotional resource, can you find an answer to the problem, yes or no? If you're determined enough, can you find the money that you don't have, can you find it, yes or no? If you care enough and get other people to care with you, can you get them to help you, yes or no? If you are bold enough, if you're strong enough, if you're disciplined enough, can you get yourself to do things other people cannot find a way to do, yes or no? See, the ultimate resource is resourcefulness.